So if you want to take out that gun and badge, I'm happy to scrap with you one day. If you want to do it, you let's do it. Let me know, buddy. That is not a crime, and you're telling me to get out of my vehicle. Broken arm! Broken arm! Broken arm! Uh, if you didn't know, I went to the police academy and they kicked me out. That's my purse! I don't know you! Spit me on my face right now! She spit in my face! Today's video takes us to San Luis Obispo, California, where we find a woman who I don't know how to describe her. She seems to be homeless and living in her van. Now that of itself is bad enough, but she claims all these wild stories. I don't know if we're supposed to believe them and feel sorry for her, or if we're just supposed to chalk it up to she's a a little bit off, let's just say it like that. A little bit Looney Tunes. But you watch it and you decide. Enjoy. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Is anyone else in there with you? No. Can you step out so we can talk? Uh. I promise this is going to be short and sweet. I just need to talk to you. Well, there's a bunch of stuff in my way. You picked a very inopportune moment. Well, I'm, what can, I, what I'm, can I do to have you step out then? <sighs> I've done a number of videos on this woman. Apparently she's homeless, and I'm not knocking the homeless by any stretch of the imagination. That's a horrible thing to have to go through. But she seems to think she has a right to park on residential streets and camp out there, which is not the case. In fact, many communities have ordinances against that very thing. And it appears as though she's trying to push the envelope in this particular community in California. So let's see what happens with her today. getting calls in the neighborhood. Do you live here or anywhere near here? I'm going to go with the answers no. So we've got folks calling saying that you're moving from spot to spot. So what are we doing that for? Have I done anything wrong? Well I'll answer your question if you answer mine. Again I'm not knocking the homeless but there are programs available for her if she would just take advantage of them. Yes, it may not be the best situation, but it will get you off the street. Now, she has said in other videos that she is of retirement age. I don't know why she can't collect any retirement. I don't know her situation, but get off the street, woman. Hi. Hi. Are you so, all right? You're what'd you really say? Shaking. Are you okay? Yeah, you guys are making me nervous. I'm 62 year old grandmother. Okay. Moving things around in my van, doing absolutely nothing wrong. Okay, but. And I you got two squad cars, three squad cars, three officers. I mean. No, I know. But Rochelle, can you at least respect the idea that I've got a bunch of people that live on the street here and they see a van that they're not familiar with? It's covered up with all the windows and they've got someone sitting in it, moving from house to house. Seems kind of suspicious, right? Yes, indeed. If I noticed a strange van parked in the neighborhood, I would call police as well. Now, again, I'm not knocking anyone that's homeless. That's a horrible thing. But there are places that will allow you to park overnight. All you have to do is sign up with them. Every city has them. You could park in a Walmart parking lot. Come on, lady, get off these residential streets. It's the holidays. People get porch thieves. They get people stealing packages. If they don't recognize the van, might be a reason why they're calling the cops, right? I don't think so. Okay, I don't well, think, I'm telling you that. I don't, not, I don't I think that, that, like, paranoia is a reason to, to call the whole squad out, out to the neighborhood. Okay. 
Okay. So <laughs> I mean, I'm not that. doing anything, so I All think right. it's kind of a waste of your time and mine. I, I'm not going to be here very long. Okay, well, what are we doing? And I'm moving things around in my van because it's freezing cold at night. Okay. I'm disabled. I have nowhere to go. This is what I don't understand about people. There are plenty of social services for this woman. She's told us she's a woman, she's 62 years old, and she's disabled. Why can't you find social services that will help you? You just want to be a problem with the community. That's all you want people to feel sorry for you. What brought you here in the first place? Though? I my whole family lives here. Are you? I had a house here, but the courts here are corrupted, so they took my house away from me and gave it to my ex-husband. What's your last name? Richards. Okay. And my ex-husband poisoned me. Confirming last of Richards versus Rochelle. She had eleven twenty-nine. And he poisoned me. And then I went to court because I was disabled and couldn't really think or do anything right. Really, I'm still not, you know, all well, as you could see. Yeah, no, I And it's because he poisoned me with arsenic and a bunch of other poisonings. Your husband poisoned you with arsenic? Oh, that sounds like a telly show. Forensic files. Yeah, that's something you see on telly. But if he poisoned you with arsenic, I don't think you'd be functioning at the level you are now. Arsenic is a debilitating poisoning, and I'm surprised you're alive. Are you sure you are poisoned with arsenic, honey? And the courthouse here didn't do anything about it because... No, but so anyways, they, the judge and all the people in this town went yeah, to, oh, sorry, oh. it went to school with my ex-husband. So they gave him everything we had together, which was about three million something worth of property here in San Luis Obispo. My house is right over there on Mar Street. Some other guy's living in there and they sold it to him and signed my deed and my title without my signature. If what you say is true, then you could definitely file a lawsuit, and you would win, no doubt about it. You just have to find an attorney that would take that case on appeal, maybe take one-third on a contingency basis. Oh, you have a lawsuit there. You should go for it. And gave it to him. Okay. And I was poisoned. So the court won't do anything about the poisoning. But they're busy giving away all my property. Now I'm out here, and look what they're doing. Yeah, no, and sending you guys out here. So, have you ever considered checking in with the homeless shelter there off of Prado? Yeah, okay. I have checked in there before. And how did that work out? Were you able? To Not very well. So, do you understand? Were you evicted from the premise, meaning you can't go back over there, or did you just not like the experience? Uh, no, they kicked me out because I tried to sleep there and. There's one big room with like a whole bunch of bunk beds. Well, now that you have your car. And all the women in there snore. So you don't like women snoring. It keeps you awake at night. Well, I guess you'll just have to take your chances on the street sleeping in your van. But that's a risky proposition at best. No, and no. I, I you couldn't... know that they have a car program, though, that you can try to sign up for a list to let your car be parked over there? Oh, yeah, I know. I'm on so, the list. Oh, you're on the list. For yeah, the I'm on well, the list for I'm homeless, for housing, and all of that. So, I'm just waiting. Okay. But it could take a while. All right. That's still, so, did we just park over here? Because... I still haven't really gotten a... Because I'm moving stuff around in my van because... No, no, but why here? There's plenty of other, like, public places to park, like the... Oh, well, because you don't really, you know, you want to try to find a spot where there's not somebody sitting right here on the sidewalk, which is, like, right right here. And public and somewhere you can park where there's not a no parking sign and... Almost all cities have an ordinance about no parking if you don't live on the street, and sometimes it's as little as 48 hours, but most of the time it's 72 hours. So I guess you have to move your van every three days to avoid it being towed? That seems rather a big hassle to me. I would just go park at Walmart. All of those things. Okay. So, you know, I just parked here like 10 minutes ago. But I was right down there, 
like right down one block right down there and there's a guy down there with a weed blower a leaf blower yeah. and I, I sat there I was like okay I could listen to that for about half an hour because I'm a writer and an artist and that's why I'm shaking because he stood there with that thing right outside my van for two hours so finally I said okay that's long enough and he was doing it on purpose going around and around my van and because uh, I was parked somewhere earlier and another weed blower did the same thing, so I moved. So I moved up here because he was sitting there for two hours. So let me get this straight. You're upset because you park on a residential street and people use a leaf blower and they're disturbing you? Is that what you're telling us? Really? And then, uh, you know. I moved up here to get away from that noise, but I was already moving stuff around in my van, trying to like. So, Rochelle, I'm not trying to interrupt. Because everything's anything. falling down. Um, what is your plan for the rest of the day? I'm just trying to straighten out everything in there, but if you want me to move, I can move. You know we have a safe parking over by the rover station. Yeah, but I, I don't want to complain, but you know. I it's, think if you do what you're doing, you keep to yourself. You have all your stuff. To yeah. Up. This woman thinks that parking on a residential street somehow keeps her insulated from crime and the terrible things that could possibly happen. I got news for you, sweetheart. Crazy people are everywhere. They're on residential streets. They're in uh, places you at least expect. And even if they did, other than the officers knocking on your windows and stuff, you don't have to open the doors for anyone. Yeah. So even if you go over there... That might be a better spot then. Because again, we're just going to keep getting calls if you keep moving up the street. Understand that we're going to keep getting calls from other folks and then you'll be talking to us again and that's how it's unfortunately going to go. Yeah, I know. I do it. All I talk right. to you guys all the time. Thank so, God you're nice enough though. We try. So what's your plan for the rest of the Yeah, day? you are though. I appreciate it. Um, I'll just move because I know you want me to move, right? Yeah. I would probably go to some of maybe that's a little more public. Obviously, it's a little residential area. Okay. I would probably do that. All right. All right. Yeah. Like I'll do. Plan? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions for me? No. <laughs> right. Thank you, Rochelle. Thank Appreciate you that. very much. You too. Thank you. Well, Bye. Ragged, yeah. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. And again, being homeless has to be one of the most horrible experiences a person could ever go through, especially a person who's not accustomed to being homeless. Yeah, it's one thing to be an alcoholic or a drug addict, and that's the cause of your homelessness. But this woman seems to have led a relatively decent, upscale life. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to say what's going on with her. But, uh, yeah, if it's all true what she says, she should get an attorney. But I don't know what to feel about her. You know, should I feel sorry for her, or should I say she's crazy and out of her mind? It's a difficult thing to, think, to uh, talk about, for sure. But if you enjoy watching idiots, imbeciles, and morons on my channel, please subscribe. As always, thanks so much for stopping by. Cheers to that.